Okay, uh, we're here at Music Connected and I'm here with uh, Don Jenkins from uh, Raw Power Management. So hi Don and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Yeah, all good. Nice to be here. Great. So uh, let's talk about Raw Power. And uh, first of all, just uh, tell us briefly what, what you guys do. Okay, well, we're a, a music management company. We look after about 25 acts currently. We operate uh, almost exclusively in the rock music sector, um, managing acts like uh, Bullet from a Valentine, Bring Me the Horizon, uh, Gallows, Young Guns of Mice and Men, While She Sleeps. Uh, I, I can't do the whole list off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, so that, that's what we do, and it's keeping us all busy. That's great, and uh, of course, you were here at uh, Music Connected. Uh, uh, you know, uh, an event for the independent sector and uh, the role of manager has changed so much in the, in the last uh, two or three years, uh, both for, I guess, major artists and for, for smaller independent acts. So do you feel like you have to take on a lot more now uh, in, in this new digital age? Well, I think um, the, the manager's role has always been all encompassing of what the artist is full business. Um, I think uh, maybe increasingly various parts of the business are uh, increasingly being put onto the workload, if you like. Um, that's certainly true of uh, the whole new world of social media, um, updates on uh, Facebook and, and Twitter and all, all of that side of stuff. So that, that, that's increasingly something that, that we're involved in. Um, I think also uh, on online retail and running um, <coughs> merch stores off the artist sites is something that we look after um, uh, extensively, obviously with partners uh, that you do merch deals as you go, but that's, uh, that's another thing we look after. Um, and I think there's probably some other areas of the business which are increasingly looking towards management to uh, step up to the plate. Um, I think, if I'm being dead straight, I think the first one of those is actually A&R. Um, uh, I think with uh, <coughs> with the business going as it does, I think increasingly uh, the the role of the manager is actually one to increasingly source and develop and nurture new new talent. Um, <coughs> and I think that that is uh, something that Raw Power do really really well, uh, and and we've. Uh, uh, operated in that field uh, since since the start of the business and <clears throat> we continue to do so um, and uh, yeah you know going forward e even this year we've uh, um, acquired some great new brands in including uh, Mallory Knox, uh, um, Don Brocco, While She Sleeps, uh, Turbo Wolf so um, yeah you know we, we, we keep on working uh, uh, at that level um, because I think you know for a management company uh, you, you, want the, you want the acts of tomorrow because that way you stay on top of the game. Of course and do you feel that there's a bit of a struggle some, at times between the, the label and, and the ma and management and artists uh, by, by default on, on, the, on organizing and managing uh, uh, what is the artist's presence out there when it comes to social media for example or, or you know st stuff like the new Spotify channels and the social presence on there? Uh, it's not really a, a, an issue that's occupied a huge amount of my time, if I'm being on, or honest with you. I think, um, I think clearly it's important that artists connect with their, with their fan, fan base uh, and, uh, and nur nurture those relationships as they go forward. Um, uh, uh, but to be perfectly frank, you know, um, I, I have to say we, we work... Um, we have very strong partnerships with, with uh, uh, the record labels that, that we're in, involved in uh, and the publishers that we're involved in. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've never really uh, encountered a situation where we've been hugely conflicted over social media presence or, or, or any parts of that. I mean, uh, that, that I think is something that uh, ultimately, I think that's actually a common sense world. Um, so uh, it, it's clear that fans, and bands are going to want to connect and basically I think everybody who's in that particular chain is just looking to facilitate that as much as they can. Yeah. And finally talk about crowdfunding, is this something that uh, you're exploring for some of your acts as uh, one of the possibilities for them to fund records or, or do other types of, types of activ activities? Well we've actually uh, already over the last couple of years run several uh, crowdfunding campaigns um, uh, I'm just trying to think who, who they would be. Um, so we, we've done work with uh, um, Pledge Music on, um, on The Blackout, for instance. Uh, Funeral for a Friend have been involved in that. Um, and we've also done work with Charlie Simpson in, in that area. And we're currently exploring about two or three other artists that we think it might be relevant for. Um, on top of that as well, I think, for me, crowdfunding is a slight misnomer. I think what we're actually talking about is direct-to-consumer sales 
and uh, uh, just uh, a question of what the product is, what the timing is, and and how you uh, take that product to market. Um, so uh, very recently we did, uh, in fact, use Pledge Music, but not as a crowdfunding vehicle, but as an uh, album pre-order campaign around the Bring Me the Horizon release, which was very successful for us. Um, uh, of course, now there's a band signed to a major label, uh, no real need to raise a certain amount of money to be able to make a record or do a certain thing. But um, what, what was interesting about that campaign uh, is the fact that we used the Pledge fat platform to enable us to um, uh, offer, um, offer a, a selection of exclusive products uh, from the band's website through to um, direct to the consumer. Uh, which included a whole range of content that was exclusive to those people who were pre-ordering and we actually put an upfront window on that actual campaign so at the time that we launched that campaign it was the only place that you could actually pre-order the Bring Me The Horizon record so it ran prior to the iTunes and the Amazon and the other uh, sales channels um, and we thought that was especially relevant for Horizon because obviously they have a uh, a very large uh, fan base and also huge social media uh, following so I think uh, doing something online direct to the fans was in that particular case a uh, complete no-brainer and uh, worked very well for us. Well awesome, uh, I hope you have a great rest of the day and thanks for talking to us. That's no, been a pleasure, thank you.